five keys for teaching mental math. This is uh, James Olson. This is 2015. I'm sure it says it somewhere. In the mathematics teacher. I just have to start by saying, reading stuff like this, scholarly articles, journal articles, I just, I gotta do it. I gotta do it all the time. I don't know why I don't do this every week. I just don't understand why it's only in my master's course that I actually read articles. Like, I get the Atlantic every month. It's a magazine, it talks about whatever. Why don't I get the mathematics teacher? It makes no sense to me. And I don't think I'm the only one. I don't know many teachers that read articles unless they have to. And I think that's a huge problem. Anyways, to this article, loved it. Um, James Olson, a teacher, used to be a teacher, now is a professor at the, I don't know, at a university. And he's talking all about how he teaches mental math um, and why he thinks it's super important. Um, so not really a research, uh, not a research paper, although it does refer to some research and some, you know, core standards and um, other articles. He lays out five different keys to how to teach mental mathematics productively. First, you got to make sure that the kids know it's useful. Second, you got to give them strategies. Third, they have to practice it. Fourth, uh, decision, which means um, that students have to be helped to practice making good decisions. Um, fifth one is mindset, uh, this idea that you're going to use mental math pretty often. Okay. And then he talks about how he teaches the strategy. So he does like a math talk, one strategy a week, usually on Mondays, he'll explicitly teach the strategy, give some examples. And those examples are always like real world types of questions. Show it to the sheet, which is what he gives. Uh, it gives the strategy up on the top and then gives some examples. This one was for dividing by four, which is split things in, in half twice. So 96 divided by four, well, half of 96 is 48, half of 48 is 24. 96 divided by four is 24. Um, cool strategy. He gives a list of 10 of his 15 strategies. He teaches 15 a year, he says, and he gave 10 of them. They're awesome. Um, and uh, I just really enjoyed the article. I think it gives a good argument for why we should be teaching mental math because um, learning happens in the brain because the less um, thinking about operations you have to do, the more you can problem solve. And because in real life, you need mental mathematics. You don't need it all the time. It's not always the best strategy, but often it is. And like he likes to tell his kids, it's faster than pulling out your calculator most of the time. Um, so yeah, really very much enjoyed it. Uh, a couple takeaways are that one, I want to continue doing my verbal exit questions. Um, and I will look to this research if I ever need to defend it anymore. Sometimes we talk about, yeah, but some kids need to see it. Some kids need to write it out. And it's like, yeah, you can do that to learn, but everyone can think about math. Um, another takeaway is that I'm usually doing operations when I do mental math, but there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know, what's five halves as a mixed number? You can do that mentally. So um, yeah, that's another takeaway. Um, as research goes, he doesn't have a lot of data or methods included in here. This is more, hey, this is what I do. Here's how you do it. So I guess that would be a critique. Um, but it's not really the, the goal of the article, so that's fine. Uh, there you go.